Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena and welcome back to my C++ series. So this episode, we're going to talk about basically what a tuple is, what a pair is, how you can deal with multiple return types in C++ and how I personally like to deal with them as well. This video is kind of stemming off, it's a bit of a spin-off almost, from the latest OpenGL video where we basically talked about shaders and how we can read shaders in a more convenient way. Check that out up there. It's a great series as well where we talk all about graphics programming and how you can make your own graphics engine and stuff like that from scratch. So if you guys haven't, if you guys are interested in that and you're just following the C++ series, definitely, definitely check out that OpenGL series. I hear it's pretty awesome. Anyway, let's talk about this. So this is a real, this is a bit of a real world example. Um, and I like this, um, because we're finally kind of at the point where I don't have to make up weird, uh, kind of examples on the spot and they're usually not very good. I can kind of start showing you guys existing code, real code pretty much. Um, and we can talk about certain decisions that we can make as as engineers, as programmers, as whatever, as developers, whatever you want to call yourself, really. Um, so specifically here, we had an issue where we had a function and we needed to return two strings. There are a lot of different ways that we can achieve kind of returning two types. Obviously in C++, by default, you can't really return like two types. In Python, you can kind of automatically, automatically, I'll say, return two types. It does some stuff behind the scenes to support that. But traditionally, when you have a function, a function can return one type, right? It can return specifically one variable. So if we have something like a function, oof, um, a function that needs to return an integer and a string or something like that, we might be in trouble because, well, we can maybe return an integer or a string, but we definitely can't return both. If we have two, if we have a function that needs to return two variables, two or more variables of the same type, we can return like a vector or an array or something like that, just containing those two elements. That's also not the best thing to do though, um, for a few reasons, and we'll check that out in a minute. Um, but really, we have this issue where, hey, you know, how how do we return? How do we return? two different variables. Maybe we do have an integer and a string or something like that. How do we deal with that? And C++ gives us a few ways to deal with it. Um, I personally hate like all of them though. Uh, and I like to deal with it um, in, in kind of my own way. Um, all right, sweet. Anyway, sorry. Um, gonna be professional, right? I mean, do you, like, do, you, do you guys like this new kind of casual setup where I'm just on the couch here and just, I like it. I think it's cool because I can just kind of have a chat to you guys and it's a lot more kind of like almost like a podcast actually, to be honest with you. Anyway, let's not get too casual though. Let's continue talking about what we were talking about. So, um, I'll just show you guys a real world example and stop talking so that you know what I mean. So if we flip, our, flip on over to our code from the last episode of the OpenGL series, we have this function here called parse shader, right? This needs to return two strings because we actually, well, we build up two strings here. The way that I've chosen to solve it in the OpenGL series is my favorite way to kind of solve these things. And that's by actually creating a struct called shader program source, which just contains the two strings. Obviously, if we wanted to also return an integer or something that was a different type, we could just add it to the struct and return it. And I'll tell you why that's my favorite way kind of at the end of this video, really. But if we, if we talk about all the different ways that C++ actually provides us with to deal with that, let's just get rid of this and let's, let's kind of deal with one way that isn't specific to any kind of class that exists in C++. I'm going to make the return type void and what I'm actually going to do is simply take in two strings as reference. So string, you know, you know vertex source or whatever, and then std string uh, fragment source. Now, because these are kind of uh, parameters that are passed by reference, we're allowed to actually write into them. Well, more specifically, at the end here, instead of returning something, we can actually basically just set vertex source equal to ss0.string. Now, you don't really need to know much about this. Let me just quickly write this out for people who haven't watched the OpenShell video and have no idea what's going on. We basically have two things to deal with. We have the vertex source code, which is ss0.str. Um, and then we have the fragment shader source code. So I'll just write that like this, okay? So basically just think of this as we need to return two strings. These, these are the two strings we need to return. So what we could do is set vertex source, which is our actual parameter, right? We could set that equal to uh, VS, which is our vertex shader source code. And then F and then for fragment source, we can set this equal to um, 
our fs variable, just like that. And then kind of when we call the function, which is over here, and we need to actually get the strings out, uh, obviously this now returns void. So I'll get rid of this assignment here. And then for parse shader, I'm gonna make two strings, vs and fs, and then just basically pass them in like that. Okay, and then we're done. And then for this create shader function, we can obviously just provide these two strings and we're all good to go. So that's one way we could go about this. Now it's not like, technically speaking, this is probably one of the most optimal ways to do this because there's no like string copying. We do reassign the string and there are some kind of issues with this, but performance wise, this is pretty good because if you take a look at this, we, we actually construct the string in the stack frame of the parent function, which is the main function. And then we just pass in basically a pointer to those two things and say, hey, when you when you make your string, write it into this memory. So we've kind of pre-allocated memory. Pass shader doesn't do any kind of actual dynamic memory allocation. Of course, when we do assign the actual string, which happens over here, it does need to kind of do some kind of dynamic, mem uh, dynamic memory allocation because it needs to actually well, copy this string into this string. So there is still a copy and all that. I don't want to talk too much about performance in this video just here, even though I love talking about it and I love talking about optimization, just because this is more or less, I, I guess, syntactically and as an actual uh, programming style, how to deal with multiple return types. So just gonna cut the optimization and performance talk right here. So from kind of a code point of view, it's not bad, it's a little bit clunky. Obviously we can't kind of fit this on one line. We need to declare these two strings and then pass them in like that. Not the best thing to do. Um, to make it a little bit more explicit, you could also make these actual pointers. The benefit here is that you can actually, with a reference, you need to pass in a valid variable, right? With a pointer, you can just pass in null or something like that. And then just do a check to see, hey, if VS is specified or rather if vertex source, which is our output parameter. One more thing I'll quickly add is that I like to name output parameters like out or something like that, you know, just to make it clear that this is an output thing. Um, so basically if out vertex source, you know, then let's basically dereference this and assign it like that. Um, and we can kind of deal with it that way. That way you can actually, you're allowed to supply, you know, into here. Uh, first of all, you need to explicitly get the memory address of these variables, right? Which is kind of uh, almost makes you think twice. You're like, actually, what is this? Oh, it's out. You know, that means that you're going to be writing into this. Um, so that's kind of a little bit more useful, but also uh, the other benefit here is that you can actually specify, you know, null for one of these. Like I only care about the fragment shader, so don't, don't give me anything for that. And that will work just fine because you're allowed to specify null now since you're taking in a pointer and this function handles that correctly. So that's kind of the as input parameters kind of way of dealing with multiple return types. Let's talk about another kind of simple way that you can probably think of by yourself as well. And that is just returning an array, right? So we could return an array in the form of just returning a pointer like this. And then at the end here, so let's get rid of these extra parameters. At the end here, we can basically just say, return new std string, which is our new array, um, which is gonna be basically an array of two. And then we can kind of just pipe, pipe in or just put in, you know, our vertex shader and our fragment shader like this. Now, the unfortunate part with this is that we are using the new keyword. So we are causing a heap allocation to happen. I would like to avoid doing that, especially because these strings already are kind of heap allocating. Again, don't wanna to talk too much about performance, obviously uh, in this video, but just keep that in mind that I kind of, not a, bit, not a huge fan of that, but we do get an array back and we can obviously deal with it just by uh, setting this equal to std string, um, you know, shaders or sources. Now, this type of array is a little bit annoying because we don't know how big it is, right? It's just a pointer. So the more C++ way of doing this would probably be just to return an std array. Uh, the type would be string and the size would be two, okay? That's pretty simple. Um, and then we can just basically return an array std string and two, and I don't actually know how to actually take parameters in or if it even does take parameters in, no clue, but you guys kind of get the point, whatever the syntax is. I don't really use standard array very often in case you can't tell. Um, you probably have to actually, well, one way you could definitely do it, uh, I guess I should show some working code, right? Um, is you could basically just create the array like this, call it, you know, results, and then just result zero equals VS and results two or one equals fs like that and return results. Uh, now what's wrong with this? Incomplete type not allowed. Uh, I'm not sure it's happy about me using array. Let's include array um, and there you go. All right, cool. That's one way to do it if you want an array. Now this shader function specifically 
could be fairly variable in the fact that we might have more than two types. So another way to do this would just be to return, it, to, to return a vector. The difference between this and the array method that I just showed you, so let's include vector instead. The difference between the two types um, is primarily the fact that array is going to be created on the, on the stack, whereas vector is going to store its underlying storage on the heap. So technically returning in a standard array would actually be faster. Um, but the vector way, again, would be very similar. Just create a vector kind of at the end here with results and then just assign results like that and return results and that's kind of it. We're done. Okay, pretty simple. We could all we could always you know reserve you know two or whatever spots if we wanted to be really kind of pedantic about our memory allocate and um, our memory allocation and recopying and all that stuff. But it's fine for now. Again, not really talking about performance. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's keep going. Um, okay, so there we go. I've shown you guys some ways to return multiple return types. Obviously, the vector and the array kind of ways only work if the types are the same. Let's talk about a universal way for us to return uh, kind of two different variables that may or may not be of varying types. And this is specifically a way that C++ actually provides for us. And the two kind of ways we'll talk about is something called a tuple and something called a pair. Now a tuple is basically a class which can contain X amount of variables and it doesn't care about the types, okay? So to show you guys what that would look like is basically what we would return is a standard tuple of uh, std string, comma std string. If we also wanted to return an integer, we could just go comma int, okay, like that. Um, so two kind of strings are what we're returning. Now we have to include two things for this. We have to include utility, uh, which actually contains the tuple. So if we go back here, um, we'll include utility. Actually, I'm not even sure if utility um, does contain tuple. What was the other one? There's utility and then there's also, I use this so so rarely you guys can tell. Uh, utility and is it functional? Maybe it's in functional. Yeah, it's in functional. So sorry, tuple is in functional. Utility is what we're going to use to make the tuple. So I'm going to return std make pair, okay? Which is in the kind of utility thing. This is specifically for making two kind of things here. Um, std string, std string, and then we'll just pass in um, vs and fs, okay? Just like that. Now we, no instance currently matches the argument list. That's fantastic. I'm probably not including something. Okay, so basically we just don't need, I mean, we don't need to specify two here. We, can't, we don't need to specify the template argument at all. It'll work that out by itself. So just return std make pair like that. And that's cool. That returns, uh, well, in this case, a tuple for us. The way that we would use this, we are specifically returning a tuple here, is I could basically just call uh, std uh, tuple, you know, std string, std string. These are our sources now. Um, and to provide to provide the actual create shader function, uh, this is the type, but I would probably, if I was using tuples, I'd probably just use auto like that, by the way. Uh, to actually get the data out of, out of the tuple though, this is the part that I hate. Uh, what you actually need to do is use std get and then the template argument here is the index, so zero, um, and then the tuple that you want to get it from, so sources. That is what actually gives you your vertex shader source code, like that, okay? So to get that to work in the create shader function, we pass in std get zero and std get one, okay? And that's how we actually get those two things out of that. That's To me, that's horrendous. Code style, I mean, what is going on here? First of all, I hate this because, well, zero and one are essentially the names of our actual variables. Like, it's hard to tell. It's like, which one's the vertex shader, which one's the fragment? Uh, I mean, logically, obviously, it makes sense that the first one's gonna be the vertex and then the fragment, but someone who doesn't know what they're doing, like, it doesn't make sense because we're not dealing with names, we're dealing with numbers. Um, so these aren't named kind of named variables, essentially. Uh, in this case, because we only have two, we can just return an std pair. Uh, the only difference here, by the way, so we have an std pair of string and string. The only difference here um, is that we can still use std get and that will work fine. But what we what we can also do is simplify it a little bit by just using sources.first like this, okay? Because there's only gonna be two of them, sources.second as well, because it's a pair, okay? So that's a little bit better. Um, just kind of in terms of syntax, I feel like that's a little bit better, but it still doesn't solve that problem because we don't know what the variables are. What's first? What is second? I have no idea, right? 
uh, it's not very clean. So that's why I always come back to the struct way of doing things, right? When we need to return multiple variables like this, right? I like to just create a struct called, well, in this case, we can call it shader program source or something like that, right? And this is just going to basically be like returning a pair, except our variables are named, right? I can make std string here, call it vertex source like that, and then make another one for the fragment source like that, okay? Um, and then just return shader program source. This is gonna like, underlying the underlying way that this works is this is just a pair right it's a struct it's literally just two strings it's made up of two strings everything's going to be created on the stack here if i just return a normal shader program source like this and then we can just simply return vsfs just like that very easy to write looks great and when we actually come to use this instead of specifying first and second we can specify sources dot vertex source and sources dot fragment source like that and everything it just it just makes sense to me. You're never gonna mix these up. You're never gonna mix first and second or forget what they which one's first, which one's second. Never gonna mix any of that stuff up. It's really easy, dead dead kind of easy to use, um, and makes in my opinion the code much clearer, much easier to read. So that is how I like to deal with multiple return types. We went on quite an quite an adventure today. I actually thought of a few things kind of on the spot as well. So that's what these new style videos on the couch are all about. This is our first kind of just open discussion, I think, about something in C++. So let me know what your thoughts are about multiple return types. Which one of these methods, or maybe there are more that I'm, I mean, I'm sure there are more that I'm, that I haven't mentioned as well. What your favorite method of dealing with multiple return types is, drop a comment below. You can also discuss this further by going over to the channel.com slash discord. It's a discord server where you can talk to other people about this kind of stuff. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to help support the series and see more great videos like this, then head on over to Patreon and call for the channel. Huge thank you, as always, to all the people who support all of the series that I make. Without those people, this series would not be here. I can say that as a fact. So huge thank you to all of you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.